Next on Newsmax Prime, the Army Chief of Staff says sending 150,000 American soldiers back to Iraq would be futile. That follows yesterday's announcement from the Commander in Chief that an additional 450 U.S. soldiers will be deployed there. So, what's our future in Iraq? Pete Holstra and James J. Carafano discuss. Plus, Brent Bozell assesses the Alphabet Network's Iraq coverage and our own Nick Tate catalogs premium increases coming to Obamacare. Newsmax Prime starts right now. Welcome into Newsmax Prime for this Thursday. I'm J.D. Hayworth. Two stories of prime interest tonight surrounding the Obama administration's uncertain and unclear foreign policy. With the deadline fast approaching, Iran says no to transparency in the nuclear deal. More on that in a moment. But first, here we go again, as the United States sends more troops to help train the Iraqis in the battle against ISIS, is this the next step toward American re-engagement in Iraq? Miranda Khan has more from the Newsmax Prime Newsroom. Miranda? J.D., many are asking if adding these trainers and advisors is the first step in the United States getting back to combat in Iraq. We had this in a good place three or four years ago, and, and uh, Iraq was safe. The economy was growing. We turned it over to the Iraqi government. I believe it's because the Iraqi government has not been able to bring all the different groups together. Until you solve that problem, in my mind, it doesn't matter how many people That's right. you put on the ground. That's Army Chief of Staff General Ray Odinero on CBS this morning saying the unrest in Iraq is from the government not being able to bring all groups to the table. Sending more troops and operating from more bases is a huge risk for both the White House and the Pentagon. For the president, his campaign was based around opposing the war in Iraq and who spent most of his first term in office making a point of announcing where and when we would be withdrawing our troops. Now, after this week's announcement, our direction remains unclear, but General Odinero says the Arab world needs to do their part. You need the Arab communities to solve this problem. The United States cannot solve this problem by itself. We need the Arabs to step up. We need them to understand we have extremism here, and they have to help us, and, and to include the Iraqis. The general had a bleak assessment saying there is no quick fix and that either way, it's going to take time. This is going to take a long time. This is not a, a three, five-year, the president said five years, I think is what he said originally. It's a three to five, seven, ten-year problem. This is not going to be fixed overnight. The general was asked about sending combat troops, and he said, even if we send 150,000 troops defeating ISIS, then what? That's a question that is being asked as we are all waiting for answers. J.D.? Thanks, Miranda. For more, let's call on a couple of guests who know whereof they speak. First, from Newsmax, Washington, we're joined by my old House colleague, former chairman of the Intelligence Committee in the House of Representatives, Pete Hoekstra. And also from Newsmax, Washington, we welcome in the Vice President for National Security and Foreign Policy from the Heritage Foundation, James J. Carafano. Jim's also the author of the new ebook, Surviving the End a practical guide for everyday Americans in the age of terror. Gentlemen, to you both, thanks for spending time with us on Newsmax Prime. Jim, to you first, a frank question. Could this be considered the beginning of round three for a genuine U.S. on-the-ground military presence in Iraq? Well, you know, I'll say two things. One is, that's unlikely under this president. This president is very clear, and, and Radio Ordierno, the chief of staff of the Army, sounds like a puppet for him basically saying, look, this is not our problem, right? So this president's not going to make any kind of commitment that's going to make a difference, which I don't understand the whole concept here is because we should only be involved if it is in our interest. If it's in our interest, we should work to solve the problem. If it's not, I don't know what we're doing there. So I completely don't get the strategy. And I, I also don't get General Odierno's statement. I mean, I've known Ray forever, and he's a respected combat commander. I get that. But his notion about, well, U.S. troops wouldn't make a difference, I mean, that's ridiculous. When we did the surge, that's what brought the Iraqis together and created that safe environment. So the point is, well, they have to get their act together. Well, that's what it requires. It requires a strategic partnership from the United States to make a commitment. Then the Iraqis will do like they did in 2007, 2008, and they'll pull themselves together. Absent that, 
we're just going to see chaos. Well, you, the, the thing that I keep coming back to, Pete, we just heard it from Jim. Uh, General Odierno, a puppet, uh, a spokesman for the administration. What is your take on what he had to say today? Well, it sounds like uh, that's exactly what it sounds like to me. In the last, uh, really in the last 48, uh, 72 hours, I've had the opportunity. I do work for the Kurds, uh, but I've met with the Kurds. I've met with a group of Sunni tribal leaders. And, J.D., the Kurds and the Sunnis, they are willing to step up. They articulate, especially the Sunnis, articulate the same message that says, you know, we're willing to form a partnership with Baghdad. We're willing to work with the Kurds. We're willing to take on ISIS. Uh, and we need some show of commitment uh, from the United States that they're going to support this effort. You know, the United States, as far as some of these groups are involved, they came in, you know, and then we left. And what happened is, and what's happening now is we are playing to Baghdad and we are playing to the Iranian influence in Baghdad. And it seems like we're doing everything to get a nuke deal and we're doing nothing to fight ISIS. But the one Sunnis portion and the Kurds, they are willing to take on that fight. Okay, I appreciate what you're saying about the Kurds and, and others, but uh, we heard General Ordieno say that other Arabs needed to get involved. Obviously, the Saudis are worried about Iran expanding. They don't want to see a vacuum there. Jim, what to uh, gen the general's point about other Arab involvement in Iraq? Okay, so this is the head scratcher. Wh wh who's he talking about? Um, is Jordan going to invade Iraq? I mean, the Jordanians are doing a magnificent job trying to keep their country together when half their country are people that have fled from other countries, and they are a keystone that's keeping this whole thing from falling apart. Egypt, I mean, Egypt is, is lucky that we have a country here that seems to be functioning and moving in the right direction. And oh, by the way, the Egyptians are, are doing yeoman service trying to stem the disaster that Obama created in North Africa. So you're Saudi setting Arabia. up the clear- Wait, wait, let's say. Okay, Saudi go ahead. Arabia? No, no, Saudi Arabia? Saudi Arabia has an insurgency and a civil war going on in its borders with Yemen, which is, by the way, being funded by the Iranians. So people are a little bit busy here. And the notion that they're just sitting around on their hands doing nothing, watching the world burn, that, for General Ordiano to say that, for a man that's been in the region and worked with these guys hand in hand, I, I just don't get it. I don't understand. Well, there's a lot of there's said. a lot of head scratching going on, Jim, and that brings me to the next topic: Iran and the nuclear deal. The Iranian envoy declined today to comment on nuclear transparency measures that allegedly they agreed to back in April. Pete, first to you. Does this finally sound the alarms and call off this deal? Uh J.D., I don't think so. I, as I just said a minute ago, I believe this administration, uh, the capstone of their foreign policy is going to be to get a nu nuclear agreement with Iran, whether it's a bad deal or a good deal. I think we're clearly moving down the road of getting to a bad deal. Uh, and, you know, this administration is going to go uh, and keep pushing down that road. And, you know, we need transparency not only to as to what the agreement is and what Iran will allow us to do and the international community to go in and see what's going on in Iran's nuclear program. We also need transparency to the American people as to what exists in this agreement and what guarantees we have. Last 20 seconds to you, Jim. Do you agree with Pete's assessment on Iran? Oh, yeah, look, well, this is the, the administration's plan. We're going to give the Iranians $150 billion and, and, and walk away from worrying about their nuclear program. Meanwhile, we're going to sell all the arms that the Saudis and Qataris and UAEs want to buy. So we're going to arm everybody to the teeth. We're going to give the Iranians $150 billion, and we're going to walk away and, and oh. wait from the sidelines and build our it's, library. It's a bleak assessment, but gentlemen, we do appreciate what you have to say tonight, James J. Carafano and Pete Hoekstra. We thank you both for your time. Still to come, after limiting the first debate among Republican candidates, a second GOP presidential forum has been added. Ellis Hinnikin and Philip Stutz react. From rising cost to constitutionality, Obamacare stays in the news. Newsmax Deputy Health Editor Nick Tate with what it all means to you. Then, Kimberly Guilfoyle on how she went from first lady of a liberal city to a hugely popular conservative talk show host. But first, Brent Bozell on the changing of the guard at another right-leaning TV network. 
All that and more as Newsmax Prime continues.